uh, uh, today we'll discuss uh, with you the uh, module 20, the enzymes and the vitamins. Uh, it will be two parts. We'll stop at the part where the regulatory uh, enzymes uh, types and then we'll come the second part. We'll continue on, on the module itself. So let's look at the definition of enzyme. Enzymes and catalysts, they share the same function at different locations. While enzymes are, are working on their biological and living environments like human body, the catalysts are working in non-living environments, chemical reaction in the in industry. But they have the same function both of the enzymes and the catalyst, they are increasing the rate, um, the rate of the reaction in the in the catalyst, or the rate of the activity of the enzyme. In case of the enzymes, so how they do that? They have to minimize the activation energy. So this is, if you look at this, this curve here, the red one. That's without using any enzyme or catalyst. But when we want to have the rate of the reaction or the rate of the, of the uh, enzyme activity, and we add this the enzyme or the catalyst will decrease. And from that amount here, so just let me just draw on. This is without the catalyst. But this is here from here. Let me just... Uh, not sure, let's take this one here, show you. So the small one here, this one here, that's what I meant, this small tiny one here. Uh, yes, this one here. This is the activation, the activation energy being reduced when the catalyst or enzyme is used. Uh, example of catalyzed uh, reaction can be given below. Uh, the enzyme is protolytic in uh, is the enzyme is proto proto pro protolytic enzyme in vivo or in vitro in vivo these enzymes catalyze protease uh, and the hydrolysis of the peptide bond here we have a peptide and if you recall this is a peptide bond if you recall from the uh, the um, uh, imides, how they come, a combination of amines and carboxylic acid lead to peptides. Here we have uh, two, um, two carboxylic, uh, two amino acids connected together. Correct? Two amino acids are connected together and the uh, peptide is here. So when you add H2O, then you you uh, hydrolyze the peptide and you produced carboxylate and the amino component and the acid component. You, you have the carbo carboxylate ion and the, the ammonium ion. So the am amino component and the carboxyl, carboxyl component. Um, in vitro, Bortolytic uh, enzymes also catalyze a different but related reactions like hydrolysis of an ester. Okay, uh, you know this is the the bond of the uh, of the ester functional group, and you put hydrolysis in acidic medium. Of course, you produce the original of the esters coming from acid and the alcohol. Correct. And this is just the acid from the uh, side product. And the, we add acid uh, as, a, as a catalyst anyway. So this is, this is another type of the enzyme can, can really uh, hydro, hydrolyze esters and hydrolyze uh, peptide, vivo or vitro. The, uh, in a chemical reaction, uh, we have uh, three conditions they have to be met in order a chemical reaction whether in, inside the human body or outside in a chemical uh, reaction in the industry or in the research lab so first step the reactants 
they have to collide with each other. They have to, otherwise there will be no, uh, no, no bond breakage and no bond formation. There will be no products. They have to collide themselves together. When they collide themselves together, they have to align themselves so that the breakage of the formation of a bond is make make it easy, facilitate it. So the the reactants they have to align themselves in a way that the breakage and the formation of a bond is is becoming uh, very easy. Then the third step here, the reactants uh, coll uh, collusion. This collusion here should provide enough energy, correct? That's very important to overcome the activation energy. So this is very important condition for the reaction to progress and produce products. And this is very important. Now, the enzymes, they have active sites. And those active sites, uh, uh, the enzymes in general, bigger in size than the substrate. The substrate are the chemical compounds, we call them substrate in the human body. But in the chemical reaction, we call them reactants, correct? We call them reactants. So the substrate, in general, they are small size and the, the enzymes are uh, larger in size. Inside these enzymes, we have active sites. The active sites are found in an interior of the three-dimensional tertiary structure of an enzyme of an enzyme. This is very important. So let me see here. The active sites have very specific, and this is very important, very specific structure. Uh, the active sites have very specific structure. They have to fit closely to the substrate structure. And this is one of the very important conditions. If they don't fit, then they will not go inside the, the enzyme and there will be no, no reaction and no products will be produced. So the specific amino group, for example, R, belongs to the enzyme interior structure within the active sites, reacts with the functional groups found on the substrate through hydrogen bond, through salt bridges, through hydrophobic interaction, and so on. So you will have this, the, the, the enzyme does have uh, special amino groups in its interior and the substrates come with, with uh, similar uh, groups which then the interaction can go through the hydrophobic hydrophobic groups can uh, salt bridge can hydrogen bond uh, hydrogen bonding uh, uh, interaction and so on so that the, then the products will be uh, produced here is just to show us the, the uh, this is the enzyme here. This is the enzyme here, correct? And this is the interior of the enzyme with the active sites. They can have amino groups or certain interior groups, whatever groups they are, and the substrates here. The reactants come with its own uh, functional groups, correct? Uh, and then interact with the groups of the uh, of the enzyme and there will be interaction and this interaction will e lead to the substrate to split into uh, products and you can see is they have to fit they fit the the substrate see how nice here the edges here they have to fit exactly inside inside this uh, active side of the enzyme so you see here how nice this is this is drawn very nicely then. And this is called always enzyme substrate complex. That's inter interaction is the reaction is occurring now. And this is just a transitional uh, complex, transitional substrate enzyme complex, it's not final. When the final, when you get the products, then will be a final uh, reaction had occurred. Here's another, another picture of uh, you know, 3D dimensional, three dimensional uh, of the um, of the enzyme, and you see this is the substrate. The substrate is always reactant, smaller than the the bulky, uh, the bulky you know enzyme. That's huge. That's all this enzyme, and those the different colors you know, different colors, different groups, on attached to the to the um, interior of the 
enzyme itself. Now the enzyme will come in, I will enter to specific to specific site. If you look at this, the three arrows, it they show to a specific um, specific uh, active sites. So the enzyme molecule, if you look what this says here, it's it's really the uh, the complexity of the active site is what really makes each enzyme so specific. So the the active sites are so complex, and if you look at this, those green arrows are pointing to three different uh, spots or sites, active sites. So the substrate is is uh, drawn into the enzyme surface, and then the substrates uh, the reactants. Subsurface molecules are positioned and align themselves in a way to promote reaction. They fit exactly the active site shape, and then they can uh, split in many uh, products or can just come out as a larger uh, uh, size product. The enzyme uh, specificity types, it's very, very important because each enzyme is, is responsible for specific type of reaction. It, it catalyzes just very, very specific reactions, not everything. So we have enzyme may catalyze a single substrate or a group of similar substrates or just particular type of bond. So there is another type here. So this is all possible thing. And if you look at the at the the, the specificity of uh, of the of the enzymes, we have types absolute, group, and linkage. And this is the example here. Absolute that's when the 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 catalyze one type of reaction for a single substrate. The reaction type here it catalyzes only one one single type of reaction for a single substrate. That's absolute, very specific. That's like, uh, you know, hydrolysis of urea. This is enzyme called urease. Urease catalyzes, uh, catalyzes the, the hydrolysis of urea. Um, the second one group catalyzes one type of reaction for similar substrate. Uh, this is hexokinase as to a phosphate groups to uh, to, to make hexose. Okay, so hexokinase adds to phosphate. This is another example of a reaction. It adds to similar uh, substrate. Linkage catalyzes one type of reaction for a specific type of bond. Now here we speak about one type of bond, and this is just an example here. Chemoterbicine catalyzes the hydrosis of peptide bonds, correct? This is the linkage when we have peptides and we uh, use this uh, type of uh, enzyme it breaks itself to two components the the amino co the component and the carboxyl uh, component that we have seen before here shows you just another another uh, like the first graph we have seen, the first curve or graph we have seen at the beginning uh, in each active uh, sites we have two two uh, Two, uh, uh, two reactions going on. The first, the binding, the binding sites within, this is the binding sites within the active sites, and this is the catalysis sites within the active sites where the reaction is happening. So if you look at this, if you look at this, this is the activation energy when, you, when we use, this is the activation energy here, when you use the enzyme. Correct? Now, without using the enzyme, this activation energy will be huge. And the ES is enzyme uh, substrate complex. This is a transitional one. That's what we said. Transitional one. And uh, it's not staying. It goes further to get the enzyme product uh, complex. And then to the final, to the product enzyme product to the final product here so you can see here just that the without the without the enzyme then 
we are talking about very light transition states and that will slow down the um, enzyme uh, activity. There are three ways by which enzyme can catalyze the reaction. Intramolecular reaction, uh, I mean inter, intra, yes, and intra, and enzyme catalyzed reaction. So three types of the, by which, or three ways by which the enzyme can catalyze the reaction. The inter, you can see it, inter, that's, that's connected. This is the enzyme here. Oops, sorry. That's the enzyme. There's another enzyme here, sorry. And this is an enzyme. Look at the difference between them. Enter the, the substrate, it fits nicely into, see here, that's the substrate here. It fits nicely into the catalyst. And this is an intermolecular interaction and reaction. So you see here, the, the, um, that's the end here. It goes in and you get complex looking like this. And then at the end, you get a product. So it goes further to the product, correct? Just this, uh, this is just a transition state, enzyme uh, substrate complex. Uh, but the in, intra, intra means part of the, of the uh, see here, the inter and intra, the substrate has nothing to do with the inside. It's not connected in any way or shape from outside, correct? The intra, it is connected, some of the groups of the substrate is connected from outside at the surface of the what? Of the, um, of the inside, through hydrogen bond, through uh, bisulfide uh, bond, to salt bridge. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's, it's just too many, this from outside. See the line here? This line here, this from outside, which is the interaction of the uh, substrate reactants with the enzyme. And then it fits in and then you see this interaction still there, correct? As the, subs, uh, the, the substrate is part of, of the enzyme, that's intramolecular interaction. The enzyme catalyzed reaction, you can see the enzyme is, is small, but you have a huge bulky, bulky substrate. The enzyme will come this time, will fit itself here. That's the active site, correct? And you can see the difference between them. All those are the substrate is small, but if you have a bulky subs uh, substrate, then the enzyme will come and fit itself into this one here and make a complex a complex of enzyme uh, substrate complex. Let's look at the uh, in, uh, the action of action models of the enzymes. We have two two models. Uh, the first one here called lock key model, and we have induced fit model. So this is lock key. So, and induced, you'll see this, this is forced to be uh, fitting. So there we are, here we don't need to do anything. Why? Because the substrate and the, the, the enzyme, the, when the, subs, the enzyme is, is drawing, is, is, is pulling out the substrate towards itself. And by doing this, it will arrange its, you know, active sites to fit exactly the, the, the substrate. And this is the complex here. This is enzyme substrate complex. Now we have in this complex, the reaction is occurring inside this complex. And this is, a, this is called another complex called enzyme product. Enzyme product complex. And here now the enzyme releasing this new a new product. So from one of this one here to, to two different uh, molecules. So this is lock and key, meaning the substrate is, 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 uh, is the key and the enzyme is the lock and they have really to fit. The reaction will never go by itself 
but they have to be really fitting 100% like a lock and key. So the lock, the key has to open the, the, the lock and it, so therefore it has to fit it very, very well. So substrate is the key, enzyme is the lock, active side is the, the active side is the keyhole. Okay. So this is called lock key model, but not all the, the time we have this type of model. Not all the time the substrate will fit exactly the, the active sites of the enzymes. In this case, we talk about induced fit model. And that's most probably uh, most of the time because most of the time you don't have this 100% fitting, uh, uh, fitting key, I mean, lock and key model. But the induced fit make a lot of, of, a lot of sense. You can see that's the, the the substrates come closer to the enzyme, correct? See here, they are not the same. They are not the same. See here, that's the, that's the enzyme is huge, very bulky. The enzyme start changing its shape, the enzyme is better to fit the shape of sub, substrate. The shape of the active center at the enzyme is flexible and, uh, and adjustable to the shape of the incoming substra substrate. The shape of the, uh, of the enzyme is not rigid, it is flexible. This is very important to know it is flexible. It is what? It is flexible. So here it is, different shapes. The substrate is pulled towards the, 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 um, the enzyme. The enzyme adjusts itself to fit the, uh, the shape of the substrate. And here they are, here they are. There's a complex here, enzyme. And here there's another complex enzyme product and here enzyme a substrate and here we have the free products coming out and the free um, the free enzyme coming out as well so this is induced fill, uh, fit uh, model classification of uh, enzymes there are six classes of enzymes types the oxoreductases transferases hydrolysis lysis isomerases, legases. Those are different types and they do the, uh, they are really specific to different type of reaction. Oxidation reduction, you have oxoreductases, correct? Those are dealing with dehydrogenation or dehydrogenases, correct? And transferases, they are doing with the uh, C, transfer races and you can see that what's happening here that transfer it's a a and b and you have c and you transfer b to c see here b to c leaving a by itself Hydro hydrolysis hydrolysis with h2o here so hydrolysis hydro the 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 class will be of the enzyme hydrolysis 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 and you can see that this a and b correct will be then uh, split in a with the h of h2o correct and you get the b o h and then the rest of the h2o is connected to the other part of the uh, of the um, molecule and then uh, liases, uh, that's like uh, synthesis, uh, synthesis, yeah, this making, combining those two uh, molecules together. Okay, so liases means synthesis, com combination reaction. Uh, Isomerases, making isomers, and you can see this is just changing this one at the top is now now at the bottom, and this one at the bar at the bottom becomes at the top. So, isomer isomer uh, isomerases making isomers making what isomers, and then the last one is is legases, okay, uh, carbon carbon legases correct, carbon oxygen carbon nitrogen carbon sulfur legases, and you look at this. You can see um, it's really uh, splitting, splitting those those atoms here. See here, you have B and A, 
and this is xdb and then you can see how those atoms are, are exchanged okay so this is six uh, types factors affecting enzyme activity well there are many factors but those nine the most important factors uh, affecting the enzyme activity temperature water presence acidity which is the ph uh, substrate concentration as well enzyme concentration the end product accumulations activators inhibitors and radiation and and light let's go a little bit in some details here um, you can see those are the factors here affecting the enzyme activity uh, temperature water uh, ph acidity uh, substrate concentration enzyme concentration inhibitors uh, end products accumulation um, activators and radiation so all those affecting the uh, the uh, the enzyme activity so let's go in some details it looks like the temperature has a, a major uh, role in the enzyme activity and the, if you look here if you look at this this is being the activity here the rate of the the activity here or the reaction and here the temperature what you can tell does the 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 enzyme prefers to have an optimum temperature see here uh, between maybe 30 to 45 something like this so this is the temperature that's the uh, the uh, the the uh, uh, enzymes most of the enzymes are working working at uh, you can see below this temperature the, the this is not you know lower and higher than this is the activity drops and we go by the optimum temperature which is at the top maximum of this uh, gauss curve so we need the temperature we need the uh, optimum temperature the uh, water presence uh, water is very important to enzyme activity without water the enzyme becomes inactive sometimes water is considered as one of the reactants the acidity again like temperature we have the enzymes as you'll see they work at the optimum um, at the optimum um, uh, pH which is very close to the um, around eight you can see here around in this in this one here around eight so this is an optimum uh, value of the pH not too acidic not too basic so mildly towards basic so this is the optimum uh, but this is just for one enzyme not all the enzyme but each enzyme will have its own optimum uh, pH it is working in so that's very important to mention that each enzyme will have its own optimum pH that that it can work uh, in this environment with this optimum pH the substrate concentration as you will know increasing the substrate concentration will increase the enzyme activity however this this increase will come to the point then start leveling off so here it is the rate of the reaction will increase 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 to the point then from here on it start leveling off and it, so the rate of the reaction it has an optimum uh, substrate uh, concentration see here it has substrate so now if i go just recall this one back we have optimum the enzyme will work at optimum temperature optimum ph and optimum concentration and this is very specific for each uh, enzyme for each some by itself um, enzyme concentration will increase in the concentration of if enzyme will increase the enzyme activity thus increase number of active uh, uh, centers at higher concentration of enzyme the effect of inhibitors will be uh, decreased but again I will speak here very uh, with caution that's too much of the enzyme might, uh, uh, might cause problems because you have too many uh, too many active sites and they will start competing against each other and here I will say there should be somewhere in this 
um, uh, optimum uh, concentration. We have optimum concentration of the of the uh, substrates, reactants, and the catalyst. It's the enzyme. They will have their their uh, optimum uh, concentration. We can work uh, with the end product uh, accumulation. That's a big problem. That's a big problem for activity. So we we like to see a lot of products coming out of the real normal reaction, but in the enzyme type four. This is not good. If you get too much of the accumulation of the product, that will act as inhibitors. It will inhibit the enzyme activity and the active side will be very crowded and blocked by the accumulation of the end products. See, that's the opposite side of the chemistry uh, outside the body. If we get more products, we get more profit and we really benefit from that. But here in the body, human body, we get into a trouble with inhibitors, which will then reduce the, the efficiency and the activity of the enzyme. And that's what we want to avoid. Act uh, uh, number seven, activators, it's the opposite of inhibitors. Some enzyme needs specific prostatic groups, also called cofactors, to exhibit maximum activity such as prostatic groups can be potassium, sodium, calcium, copper, magnesium, ions. So those are cofactors and they are needed as activators, as activators. Now inhibitors, we said the end of end product, if we have too much of it can act as what? As inhibitors, correct? And there are other, other inhibitors as well. Inhibitors are less effective at higher concentration of the substrate and inside. If we have very high concentration of the substrate and very high concentration of the uh, of the um, of the enzyme, then the inhibitors will will uh, the inhibitor, inhibitors activity will decrease. Now I will say at higher temperature, I will say at the optimum as well as the optimum concentration of the substrate and the enzymes, then these inhibitors will be, um, will be uh, uh, declined, will be decreased. So there are three types of inhibitors. How many types? Three types. Competitive inhibitors, non-competitive inhibitors, and competitive inhibitors. So we have three types of competitive uh, of inhibitors competitive, non-competitive, and competitive uh, inhibitors. So, um, radiation, um, radiation and light. Well, radiation can be, can, light is very important for some enzymes to function prob uh, probably, uh, like photolase, photolase enzyme, which require the light for the photoreactivation of DNA repair. Extra UV rays, alpha, beta, gamma radiation can cause in, uh, enzyme oxidation and peroxide are formed, which decrease the enzyme activity due, 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 uh, due to oxidation. Uh, reg regulation of enzyme activity. So we have now to look at the enzyme activity in, in, some, uh, in some details. And if you look now, we'll talk about the regulation of the enzyme activity. Here in this, in this part here, all this part here will talk about the negative, correct? And here, a negative regulation, and here is the positive regulation. So we have a negative elester, um, el, um, allosteric regulation, and here is positive allosteric regulation. What the difference between them, you can see, we have the difference between them, we are using in the positive uh, allosteric regulation, we use activators, activator. And here in the negative allosteric regulation, we use what? Inhibitors. Now, the inhibitors come in and attach to them to allosteric side. This is allosteric side. Allosteric side is not the active side. This is the active side. This is what the reaction is happening, occurring, correct? Now it will, the inhibitor come and attack um, and um, 
not attack, but it's attach itself to the to the enzyme side, altering what the active site is altered now. It does not fit the incoming substrate, and there is no chemical re no chemical reaction. This is called negative allosteric uh, regulation. So this is negative allosteric regulations. Now the good thing here we have activators. We say the activators can be uh, cofactors such as uh, potassium, sodium, magnesium, calcium, uh, ions, correct? Those will come and attach them to allosteric. Allosteric is a side that can attach, attach it, uh, any active, uh, inhibitor or activator can attach to it. Now this one here, the activator will come and alter the active side. See the active side start like this. Now with this in, uh, activator, the active side is, is altered and it fits the substrate perfect. So this is positively allosteric regulation. So we have two sides on the, on the uh, enzymes. One called active sites where the chemical reaction is happening and the other one called allosteric um, activation. Uh, allosteric side, this allosteric, uh, steric, allosteric, uh, sorry, allosteric uh, side is the one is guiding, we'll say, guiding side. They guide really the the, uh, the active side to to change its shape to fit exactly the sub the, the incoming substrate. So more is uh, regulating. Uh, this this uh, active active uh, activators is regulating the the active side so it will fit the inhibitors dysregulating I mean uh, the active side so they will not fit the incoming substrate and no reaction will happen so there is no reaction here is happening there is a reaction here is happening and here we have a product um, as I said we'll uh, cover uh, uh, for this uh, first part, those two. So these regulatory enzymes are allosteric um, enzymes, feedback control, and covalent modification. This will come uh, in the second part, the covalent modification. But let's go to the uh, enzymes. Are, uh, uh, there are three types of regulations inside the enzymes, allosteric, feedback and covalent modification. So let's go for the first type of the regulations. The In the allosteric enzymes, they have a site, they combine to a, uh, with a regular uh, regulator molecule that is different from the substrate. The molecule is different from uh, substrate, can be activate, uh, activators or inhibitors, correct? They bind a specific site in the enzyme called allosteric side, see? Allosteric side, which is different from the active side. It's not the active side, but it controls the way, the shape of the active side, correct? So if you have a, a activator, it will shape it to fit positively and reaction will occur if you have an inhibitor the active side shape will be different from incoming substrate and no reaction will, will happen. So there are, as I said, positive regulation and negative regulation. We discussed this a couple of minutes ago and you have seen from the figure there. And the positive uh, allosteric regulation, we have this, this active doors such as cofactors of sodium ion, potassium ion, and uh, uh, calcium ion, those can come in and then attach themselves to a side, not the active side, but another side so they can control the way the active side will will fit themselves properly uh, to the shape of the substrate and chem chemical reaction occurs. In the negative allister um, allosteric regulations, negative reg regulator changes inhibitors the shape of the active side in the way the active sites will be really different. They have a different shape from the substrate and the reaction will, will not occur. 
uh, the second type of regulation called feedback. Now we know the feedback means at, uh, the end products accumulation, which is, is a negative reg regulator, correct? Can affect the activity of side of the enzyme. The end product molecule can bind to the allosteric side of the enzyme at, at or closer to the beginning of the reaction series. Such binding changes the shape of the enzyme active sites in the way the new coming substrate cannot fit into the active site and thus the reaction stops and the intermediate molecular products will not be formed. We'll see it in, in a couple of minutes how this looks like. When the end product accumulations are very low, then the end product molecule will leave the allosteric sites and active site will be reactivated and the substrate can bind to the active site and the reaction occurs. So let's look at the uh, picture here maybe. This is very nice picture. You can see how this feedback is working. Here we have an enzyme, correct? This is our enzyme here. As he has said, this is the enzyme. This side here of the enzyme is the allosteric site. This, this is our active site. And it looks from the looking here, they fit the substrate 100%, correct? So the reaction occurs, this is a multi-system enzyme. So enzyme one is very important, this is number one. It goes, produce one substrate, I mean one product. It goes to enzyme two, another product C. And then uh, enzyme three produces D. D is the final product for multi-system of enzymes. We have three enzymes, they are producing D. Now, What's happened is well, it, it went very smooth, no problem. Now part of D, because it accumulated too much of it, will come back and then attach itself to what? To the allosteric, what? The allosteric um, site. By doing this, the active site is altered and the substrate cannot come and react with the enzyme one. This is enzyme one. This is enzyme number one. This, as you can see it here, from here, this is enzyme, I'm speaking about this picture. Enzyme one, there is no reaction, there will be, then all these steps will stop. It will not go smooth to get D. Now, if the, then later on, if the D is, is becoming less, then D will leave the allosteric uh, uh, site and then the active site will reshape itself to fit the substrate and then the reaction reoccurs. Okay, so this is just the picture of what's, what's having feedback. Here's the same thing. We have multiple, uh, multiple um, enzymes. I think we have one, we have two, we have three, we have four, we have five. Very smooth, very smooth coming out and this is our product here this is our product here our product is 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 um, is coming there and this the name of it is i think is iso uh, iso uh, isotoronine isotoronine that's the, the 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 products coming in and if you look at the products here the Brotox is coming, correct, from five steps of five enzymes. Now this Brotox is accumulating, accumulating, accumulating. It come back and then attack, uh, not really attack, but attach itself to the allosteric side of enzyme one. It blocking it, and therefore the active side of, of uh, enzyme one is altered, and it will never accept any any coming substrate. So this substrate will never be accepted and the reaction stops. The same thing we said with this. So let's go back and look. Reaction goes very smooth through three system. Here in the other, other in this one here, we have five, five system, five um, um, enzymes. Here we have three, only three enzymes. And then it goes, uh, produce the first step B, second C, and then the third step, third enzyme produces D. Now, as too many of D is produced, this is 
end product accumulation, what part of D will come and block the steric sites. By doing this, it forces the active side, the active side of the enzyme to change, so it will never fit the the uh, the uh, shape of the substrate, and uh, the reaction will stop here. There is no further reaction. Correct. And here's the same thing here. Uh, this is five system, five enzyme system, multi system. The reaction goes very smooth, and we get a lot of products of this. And this, as the time uh, goes by, this product is becoming too much of it available. Some of it will come and block the uh, allosteric sites of the enzyme one, leading to the, the active sites in the enzyme one being changed, altered. They will not fit the substrate, uh, the substrate here. This is the substrate here, shape will not be fit the enzyme uh, active side shape, so the reaction will stop. Thank you very much, and then we'll come to look at the covalent modification in the part two. Thank you.